hold hands and close your eyes. It's half past midnight, and you're listening to the Ghost Story Pass. Welcome to the Ghost Story, guys. I'm Brennan Store. I'm Ian Gibbs. And this is the show where we talk about spooks, specters, and all the other things watching us from the shadows beyond the campfire. Some conversations only make sense after the sun has set, and this is most definitely one. Thanks for tuning in. This is bonus episode number six, and we're coming to you from that tiny mountain cabin you dream about but can never quite reach. Ian, you really screwed with me there <laughs> because we recorded this three times, and I'm Ian Gibbs got weirder every single time. I, I threatened you I, if you kept screwing up, I was going to start using an accent. What? Well, it just throws I'm me off. I'm Ian Gibbs. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think next time you do it, I'm just gonna go Ian Gibbs. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> oh. Like it's a bad edited insert. And I've actually been dead for three years. Well, you keep that up, you might be. <laughs> Jesus, how you doing, Ian? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm pretty good. <laughs> this is yes, it is our bonus episode. It's yeah. November, and uh, we were originally not going to do a bonus episode this month just because we thought you know we we don't want to do it every month uh, no. if we don't have something to say. Yeah, exactly. And then. Through random happenstance. Yeah, and Remembrance Day. Well, Remembrance Day too, yeah, yeah of course. And, and it fits the theme. We found something from the First World War that we thought we'd share with everyone. But uh, before we get there, what have you been up to? Not a whole lot. No. Doing a ghost walk tonight. <sighs> yep. No, <laughs> I'm right there with you. Yeah, it's been uh, just, yeah. Just coasting, just doing the coasting. regular thing. That's Day job, right. cooking meals, cleaning the house. Yeah. yeah. No, nothing too exciting. My fish died. That made me sad. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I lost salt water. What, uh, what happened, you know? Fish. I think he just reached the end of his time. Ah, fair enough. See, Brennan, we all have set periods of time Not on me. Earth. I'm going to beat and the odds. <laughs> he was a yellow, blue-tailed, no, he was a blue, yellow-tailed damsel named he, Mr. Fish. Well, of course. And now he's... No longer with us, so that's well, sad. Fare thee well, Mr. Fish. Yes, I cleaned up his tank, except I decided to, I read on how to get a tank really clean, because it always leaves white marks, and I right. said, oh, dump a thing of vinegar in there. Right. So I did, along with water, filled it right up to the top, left it for six hours, and it's true. It, perfect. Right. But then I'm like, I don't want to waste the vinegar. So I bought a box of baking soda, and I poured it down the drain of the sink, and then I picked the tank up, and I dumped it. Oh, into the sink, okay. and unfortunately, not all the baking soda had made it down the drain, and all of a sudden, there was this explosion of this <laughs> huge white foaming mass coming up and over. Luckily, it's two sinks, and there's the middle divider is lower than the top of the sink, or right. I would have been screwed. Jeez. So I'm Christ. frantically pushing the bubbles into the second sink, and yeah, no. So it wasn't a great great moment for me not a super proud moment that well Lesson learned what? but then unfortunately the um entire condo smelled like a fish and chip store so that didn't work out so hot i don't know that sounds pretty great to me not for six or seven hours agree so, to disagree less, <laughs> so i would have been happier if it smelled like a kfc kfc depresses me well <sighs> every time i walk into a kfc oh it it the floor is always greasy oh it's it feels like 1990 1996 yeah no one knows any better yeah and we're all going to die. And I have to say, since I discovered roasting chicken yes. at the Korean places and Chicken on the Run, where we usually order from, I don't know that I could go back to Oh, KFC. why would you? It's a really sad facsimile. Of what... So you've tried some of those Korean places? Uh, I've tried one. Yeah. Which it was one? really good. The one on Quadra Street. Um... Oh, Chicken 649. Yes. And it's good? Yeah. I've heard great things. I've it's heard really good. Sometimes it's quite a lineup. Uh, yeah, I went sort of the middle of the day and there was nobody else there, but apparently they called it that, or did you tell me this and I'm going to embarrass myself in front of you? I don't think I they told you this, so. started the business with money they got from the lottery, yeah. 649. Yeah, they won. I whole think you did tell me that, because I haven't me. talked about fried chicken with anybody else but you. <laughs> and I nor would I. I'm nor your, would I. I'm your fried chicken friend. You're yeah, my that's fried right. chicken yeah. friend. We yeah. have to have fried chicken fidelity. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so um, I want to try the place, there's two places now in Cook Street Village. Right. Uh, Empire, which is tied to the donut shop. Oh, of course. And then another Korean place. I think it's Thunderbird, where, is that one? Yeah, where Cherries used to be. Yeah, yeah. That's or Thunder Rosie's. 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 All right, so on this episode, uh, again, we, uh, we hadn't really planned anything. And then my a friend of mine was at the university library mm -hmm. and was uh, browsing through books. And they, there's, they actually have a paranormal section up there. I had no idea. Yeah, I'm going to go and have a look myself one of these days. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, she found this book called Psychical Phenomena and the War. Pardon me. Psychical Phenomena and the War. 
by Harroward Carrington, which is a name great people just don't have name. anymore. That is a great name. And I think it was published in something like 1917 or 1918. Oh, wow. So it's sort of a retrospective on the First World War. Which is interesting because that's when spiritualism got really big. Right, yeah, yeah. Because of all the deaths and Spanish influenza. Of course. Uh, world War One and Spanish influenza made the world, like, Ouija board crazy. Right, because yeah. everyone was trying to reach out to yeah. people on the other side. They'd lost so many. Right. There's a bunch of great stories in there. I haven't finished it yet. But the one that caught my eye, and I just thought it would fit nicely in a bonus episode, mm -hmm. I called Saffir Kelly's Search for Water. And before we get started, I wanted to just check our sources. We used the book I mentioned, esoterex.com, and I'll put a link to their article in the show notes, History Channel Online, and the Government of New Zealand's website. <laughs> uh, I researched as much of this as possible without bogging down in history, because there was this moment where I was thinking, oh God. I need to understand the Gallipoli campaign in the First World War to be able to... Right. And I thought, no, this is stupid. Yeah. Why am I... No, no, why because am I Because you're it? Brennan and that's what you do to yourself. Yes, exactly. You understand. Yes, I do. Now, you are not familiar with uh, Sapper Kelly's Search for Water. I am not. Okay, so I will, t I will tell you the story. I will love to hear the story. All right, so the story, it starts during the Gallipoli campaign of World War I. Right. And again, military history bores the hell out of me, <laughs> so I'm not going to spend a lot of time breaking nope. it down. But the basics are, in 1915, Allied forces tried and failed to take control of the Dardanelles Strait, which is part of Turkey. Right. And it was controlled by the Ottoman Empire at that point. And they tried a naval assault, which went badly. Uh, and then they tried again on land. And that also went badly. <laughs> and I, I've read one of the reasons that it went badly is they completely underestimated both the number and capabilities of the Ottoman troops. So the invasion was centered on the Gallipoli Peninsula. And like I said, it, it went badly. Uh, if you want the specifics, you can look it up. But the fighting went on for months. In the end, over 130,000 men from both sides were killed. Wow. And double that number again were wounded. Good grief. So a huge problem for Allied forces was the lack of available fresh water. And this is where the whole thing stems from. The Gallipoli Peninsula was such a dry place that the water had to be shipped in these huge barges from Malta, pumped into tanks, and then moved by mule through the last place God made. Not very practical. No. And the Corps of Royal Engineers tried searching for wells, but they came up dry. They came up dry. Ah, ah. Hi oh <laughs> Get out. <laughs> and of course, this was a surprise only to the Allies. Yeah, of course. Because of course. The, the Turks had pretty, been pretty vocal about the fact that this was an untenable position yeah. for an, us, an army of any size to hold because there's no water. Yeah. As if it wasn't bad enough that uh, you know they were blown to hell when they landed, they were running out of water. And so this is where we meet Sapper Kelly. Nice. In case anyone's wondering, because I, I was... Sapper is a term for a soldier who performs engineering duties. Oh, okay. I yeah. didn't know that. No, yeah. I had to look that up. His name was Stephen Kelly. Right. And he was originally English, but hmm. no one's perfect. Isn't your wife English? Shut up. <laughs> that was an attack at you. That's where I was born, but your wife is more British than I am. But she has sex with me, so... <laughs> nope. She gets doing mix. that. Nope. So no, you, you're certainly she not. She wins. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, yeah. Threw up a little bit in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, Stephen Kelly was English. He was born in Maidstone, Kent, but he emigrated to Queensland, Australia when he was a young boy. <laughs> emigrated or? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> you stole a candy bar, off you go. Off you go, to boy. Botany Bay, Under the boat. You little bastard. <laughs> <laughs> he was in Gallipoli as a member of the Third Light Horse Brigade. He was presented to the brass as someone who could douse for water. Very cool. Yeah, and, and for those of you who don't know, Dowsing is the practice of using a small tool. <laughs> I was going to say, so you didn't practice with that. Oh, you dirty motherfucker. <laughs> I'm going to leap across this table <laughs> like a spider monkey. <laughs> no, you won't. <laughs> well, I'd pay money to see that. More of a bear stumbling off a cliff <laughs> with his head stuck in an empty log. <laughs> I was thinking uh, a beehive. Well, well, yeah, yeah, that's going... what I was thinking. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Yes, anyways. So, dowsing is using a... A fork stick or crossing rods, right? Don't they use... What are those yeah, called? Yeah, crossing rods. I don't know what they're called, but yeah. The, crossing rods? Crossing rods. Mm -hmm. uh, or a copper rod. Right. And basically, you d it allows you to determine the location of underground water and other things. Very cool. And actually, one of the guys I interviewed while I was writing A Strange Little Place, available everywhere, five books <laughs> sold. Or Amazon. Mostly Amazon. Mostly. <laughs> hey, someone bought an autographed copy of my book. Through mm. our web store. Bless her heart. Of course, I, I had to order it from Amazon. <laughs> so my profit will be about 57 that cents. That is so terrible. I know. Well, I, I was looking. I, I thought, okay, so someone has ordered a co an autograph copy of our books. So I will, uh, I don't have any left. So I'll right. just get it on Amazon. And I thought, well, you know, a lot of the times 
you can get secondhand copies right. for cheap. And I know on Amazon.com, there's several copies of my book for at least eleven. Yeah, sweet dick all, like it's cheap. Yeah. So I go on Amazon.ca to try and determine whether or not I can get a cheap copy. Different story. All the fucking used copies are more than the new ones. <laughs> it's not like they get better with age, but holy <sighs> man. So anyways, getting back to Sapper Kelly. <laughs> He's and not out- going anywhere. Well, this is true. <laughs> <laughs> but right, getting back to point of me mentioning the book, someone I interviewed for the book, he actually uses a pendulum to douse for minerals on old mining maps. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah. And he's actually done fairly well with it. That's awesome. Yeah. So when Stephen Kelly was a child uh, in Queensland, yeah. the story goes that an elderly water diviner came through his neighborhood and was divining for water. Because, yeah. you know, Australia is awful and really un- <laughs> they need water. Yeah. Kelly would follow the old man around as he wandered around with his divining twig. And when the old man found water, Kelly said he felt his nerves twitch and a thrill go through him that wasn't just excitement. Stop looking at me like that. We're honoring this man's story. Because the old man's fraud. <laughs> oh, I see where this is coming. <laughs> is this a familiar story then? <laughs> I think I saw this on video. <laughs> anyway. Yes. So Kelly decided to try it for himself, and he found he had an aptitude for it. Cool. Back on the uh, Gallipoli Peninsula, the brass were so desperate for water that they figured they'd try pretty much anything. Sure. So Kelly was given the go-ahead, and he started the next morning. Uh, Rather than a twig this time, though, he used a piece of copper, which he said would not only allow him to locate water, but uh, whether it was a pocket of water, a spring, or an underground river. Wow. And within a few hours, he located a well 100 yards away from headquarters. And once opened, it produced about 2,000 gallons of cold water per hour. Holy cow. That yeah. would be a lifesaver. Uh, and the book says artesian water. Yeah. I don't know what that means. I do. Well, what does it mean? It means it comes through the rock. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's a good thing. So An filtered. artesianal well is better than a spring. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because it comes through the rock. So it's filtered. Yeah. Oh, there you go. So yeah. So, the rock. so artesian water. Thing. Yeah. Cool. Two other wells were found and opened shortly after that. And by the next week, he had located about 32 wells. Holy cow. Producing 100,000 gallons, sorry, pardon me, pardon me, producing enough water for 100,000 men with one gallon per day per man. That's amazing. It's crazy. Yeah. And some of the wells he located were within 50 yards of where the other engineers had sunken probes. <laughs> and they had gone further than he eventually ended up having to. They'd gone deeper with yep. their probes. So it's not always about whose probe goes the furthest. It's where it goes. Good and to know. how well it goes there. Happy Remembrance Day. Let's talk about boners. (laughs) And probes. God. Yeah, it's pretty pretty bad, Brendan. Way to go. (laughs) He's got some very conflicted feelings here. (laughs) Moving on. uh, Kelly basically got an attaboy from the generals. And he was mentioned in some dispatches, but the brass had to get back to, you know, trying to slaughter people who they barely understood. Of course. Yeah, so he was soon forgotten. And ev- eventually they evacuated the peninsula in retreat, and Gallipoli, I, mean, I think most everyone knows this, it became to the Australians what Dieppe was to Canadians, mm-hmm. by which I mean somewhere a whole bunch of people died for no good reason. Mm-hmm. Really, that's the end of the story of Sapper Kelly. It's mm. nothing real fancy. It was kind of a neat th- story I wanted to share with the listeners. And Very uh, cool. And it's cool that um, dousing is still definitely a thing. Oh, absolutely. Um, in Alberta, I know farmers will hire these guys to come and... And find wells for the animals, sure. for the homes. Like, yeah, it's a thing. I was reading a piece in 14 Times uh, a couple weeks ago, and they were talking about how um, some, what are they called, utility companies are yes. still using dowsters. Yes. And it's some people, of course, the sort of the materialists, the rationalist types, they're pissed off about this because this goes against, you know, these guys are witch doctors, they're full of oh. shit, they can't actually do what they say they can do. Except they can. Oh, sure, they can. But again, this that's not the point. The no. point is winning the argument. Yeah. So these th- some of these uh, companies, it's a little bit of a dirty secret that they do this because they just don't want anyone to know. No. It's kind of like the police detectives. Police using psychics. Psychics, yeah, yeah. 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 Which is uh, done more than I think people realize. Oh, absolutely. I mean, sometimes no. Um, <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. No, it's not done but every, a lot of them, the time. It does make a huge difference. And I don't know. I think I, I'd love to try dousing. I wish I knew someone who absolutely. did it. That'd be really cool to try it out. I mean, I've used a pendulum, but... Um, like, has it worked for you? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. It, it was really incredible, actually, because I know the sort of the standard explanation is the idiomotor effect, which of course is like micro movements. Yeah. But when I was had this sort of pendulum dangling, and was asking questions, I have never been capable of making something move with movements that tiny without seeing my fingers move. Right. And my fingers were still. Wow. And this thing was swinging wildly side to side. Back and forth was yes. Circle was no. Yeah. 
and it was just going. Wow. It was sort of a limited experiment because I didn't really want to make a habit of doing that. <laughs> just because I don't trust it, right? Yeah. Because I feel like if you trust these things too much, you lose your ability to determine for yourself. You drop your guard. That's it. You drop yeah. your guard. And you, you come to rely on them. Yeah. It, we've talked about this before. You don't know what you're talking to. No. You don't know what's guiding you. No. You can say it's your spirit guide or whatever. You don't know. Mm -mm. And you need to be careful. No, and it's not like some bad entity is going to tell you the truth. No, that's exactly <laughs> it too. Yeah, yeah, 100%. No, so it's it's good. a fun thing to play around with. But I would like to try actually dowsing for minerals or water. Or gold, I think. Gold would be sweet. I'm going to dowse for gold. <laughs> I'm just imagining walking around Victoria and you end up come back with like all these gold bars with swastikas stamped in them. Ah! In Victoria. This is where the Nazis hid their gold. <laughs> and they're like, oh, those are... No, don't touch them. They're mine. <laughs> that's right. It might be hard to pawn those. Mm, I'll mop them down. I imagine this is going to go as well as your experiment with uh, the vinegar and the flour. <laughs> baking soda. Oh, right. Yeah. Me. The soda. other great experiment, actually, did I tell this one already about the beeswax? Nope. So when I lived in Winnipeg, I had a boss who was a tool. Right. And I was big into making beeswax candles. Okay. And I would sell them um, locally. And um, so I had this going on, and there was a woman who was at the church I was at, and she said, I'm going to give you all my wax for my bees. And I'm like, oh, my God, that's amazing. But you had to clarify it. So what you do is you put it in a big disposable pan, you put it in the oven, it melts, all the impurities float to the top, and you skim it, and then you've got this wonderful okay. beeswax. So behind my back, this guy went to this woman and told her that I didn't want the wax, and she was to give it to him. The motherfucker. Yeah. So then I found out about this and I was so furious. And then he had the balls to come to me and be like, how do you clarify it? You dirty bastard. So I said, well, you get a disposable turkey pan and you put the wax in and you, you melt it and then you pull it and you skim it off. So two days later, he comes to find me and he is furious. Not at me, at himself. Because what he'd done was he'd put all the wax, probably about 10, 15 pounds of wax into this turkey pan, put it in the oven. And then he went and he grabbed the corners of the pan. He didn't put it on a cookie sheet. What? He didn't put it on a cookie sheet. So when he grabbed the corners of the pan, it folded in half. Oh, you dildo. And beeswax went all over his stove, all over the kitchen floor, all over the oven. Like, it was a massive mess. And I looked at him, and all I could think of was karma. Yeah, that was... Pure karma. That was a fucking so freight train of karma. Kind of awesome. That is fantastic. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, see, I, I say it like that could have happened to me, but it wouldn't have. Because I would have put it on a cookie sheet. Yeah. Because everyone I, knows those pans are terrible well, and they fold Why would you even use a disposable? I guess because you're going to throw it wax. away. Right. Yeah, okay, yeah. fair you enough. You don't want to use a nice <laughs> Right, pan. right. That's never coming in. Because the worst thing is you try and clean it, and then it goes down the drain, and then it Clogs cools down drain. the drain. Right. Exactly. You ever hear, because that happens with fat. Yeah. You ever hear about those fat bergs they, in the London sewer? I have. Just That's huge. not good. Well, British people deep fry everything. Oh, yeah, that was a good point. Well, <laughs> if I had to eat British food, I would too. <laughs> no, they're really bad. I can't imagine. I mean, we, uh, with fat, we pour it into a, a jar. Yeah, I pour we, mine we into like a can and then I'll throw it away or um, I'll save it because I use it to make roast potatoes. Oh, nice. Yeah. Bacon that fats can't be good, good for you. Who cares? Oh, I see. Okay. They're delicious. Um, it's a British thing. Of but, course it is. Yeah, no, I never pour it down the drain. It's it's no. bad for you. It's bad for everything. Well, we we compost it. We just toss it in the. Oh yeah, the yeah, compost, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, I told you about the thing with the raccoon in the compost. It was late at night. I was watching. I was it was in line in bed, and I heard a noise outside in the balcony. We have a compost like a plastic bin that gets taken away. Yeah. And I heard this scraping. And I thought <laughs> I think I know what that is. So I go out. Now I'm bare ass naked. Go into the living room. Open the balcony door. And sure enough, I can see in the dark a raccoon tugging on the compost bin, trying to pull it and get into it. And I said to him, hey, hey, buddy, get the fuck out of here. And he sort of looked at me. Now, the thing is, I'm, I'm naked. Yeah. And our patio faces the street. Yep. So I have to kind of wrap myself toga-like in the curtain <laughs> and then turn on my cell phone. You should burn those curtains. Uh, yeah, I did. <laughs> turn on the cell phone flashlight. And I'm shining it on him. And trying to sort of shout at him without showing like, him. Shut up. Exactly. Yeah. So I start hissing at him. Oh, how'd that And go growling over? at him. Oh, that worked. Did it? Yeah. He started backing away. I was going. Oh, Rrr. yeah. Yeah. But I there I am, a, a 35-year-old naked man standing with a c curtain wrapped around me, growling out the window. 
Okay, weirdly, I've had a similar experience. I have to hear this. <laughs> it's when I lived in my house in San Antonio and I had chickens. Okay. And one night, something grabbed one of the chickens. Right. Um, air, all the, the hens were going crazy. I didn't know. Raccoon, a cougar, I didn't know. Right. So I run out of the house. I'm in my underwear. And I'm running <laughs> around the backyard. And I'm yelling. And I hear this chicken way up in the tree. And I hear it going like, ah. Oh, no. I know. So then I run out of the backyard onto the public piece of land back there in my underwear still in the middle of the night. I'm like, give me back my damn chicken. <laughs> and then it dawns on me, if it's a cougar. Yeah, what the fuck are you going to do? Right? Yeah. I didn't even bring a stick. Jesus. So I kind of went, eh, you can have that one. And I just <laughs> I just went back. I, there's no way I was getting that chicken back. No. So I just went back in and closed up the hen house. And oh, that poor that. chicken. But yeah, no. The other time with the chickens, I was all excited because we drove home from work and I look out and I'm like, oh, look, an owl. That's so cool. I've never seen an owl here before. Oh, yeah. no. Idiot. Yep. And then the next Swoop. day, three of our chickens got three. Three Holy taken out. Holy shit. Yeah. So, eh, live and learn. Oh, man. Not great, though. No. No. I, I was just watching this movie last night called The Bird with the Crystal Plumage. It's like a slasher film yep. from the 70s. There's a scene where the main character who's investigating this series of murders goes to visit this reclusive Italian artist out right. in the country. And he, the artist is trying to find something, and he opens a door, and this cat runs out. And he says, oh, lock the door, lock the door. So there are locked the window. So the guy locks the window, and the artist grabs the cat and says, oh, he almost got away. And he puts him in this little pen with all these other cats. And this, the, the main character says to the artist, why do you keep them in the pen? He says, oh, to keep them fat. It's like, well, why, oh, why would no. you want to keep them fat? Well, to eat them, of course. Oh! And the camera cuts back to the table where they had been eating together. And obviously he'd been eating cat. cat. I was so upset by this. <laughs> I was hashtag triggered. I was not okay with this <laughs> this Italian son of a bitch. The, I mean, I, I understand it's a movie. It's not real. The idea of it offended me. In Asia, I'm pretty sure I had cat. Oh, uh, yeah. No, fair enough. Pretty I, sure. I, I mean, in a country where there's just no protein sources, you eat what you can catch. Yep. Essentially. And, and I mean, I've seen a cow play fetch. So, I, you know, I feel yeah. bad about that, too. Yeah. But no. just that was that was over the line. Yeah. Oh, man. That. All right, so that's going to do it for the bonus episode. Again, this sort of a quick little one to share that story with you guys. Yeah. And, and you know what? It just shows you where weird, paranormal, esoteric stuff is happening in all kinds of places that you have no idea about. Yeah, and I think it's important to be reminded of the fact that just because you are told something is true does not mean it is true. Absolutely. You know, so if you're told, if these things are bullshit, dowsing is bullshit, it doesn't work. Yeah. No, it does. Yeah. It does. There are people who can't, who say they can do it and they cannot. Right. But that does not mean it is not possible. Well, it's like psychics. I've met people who are, claim they're psychic and they're no more psychic than my left toe, but sure. you meet other people and you're like, whoa. I know a guy who used to lie pathologically and there was a, this, this fellow I used to work with, his name was Richard. He was the most efficient person I've ever worked with. Richard, if you're out there, you're, you're the greatest. <laughs> he was also the band leader for the Alpen Rose Band, and he needed a drummer. Mm -hmm. So this guy, who liked to lie, said, oh, I play the drums. No. And Richard said, okay, you come to practice. So this guy comes to practice. He's sitting at the drum kit. He cannot play the no. drums. No, no. And Richard puts the music down in front of him, and he gave it the try, hoping perhaps that the spirit would infect him. Nope, he could not play the drums. That is not something you want to lie about. No, no, because you are going to be caught out. 100%. But just because that man could not play the drums does not mean no one can play the drums. No, exactly, 100%. I mean, you can fake some things like, oh, you should come over, I'll make you dinner, and then you order in, but you don't tell the people you ordered in. Like, <laughs> that kind of thing you can fake, but playing a musical instrument in a public venue? Yeah. You can't make no. that one. No. 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 So there's there's much more strangeness in the world than uh, than some folks would like to have you believe. And Absolutely. I find that comforting. I do too. All right. So that's going to do it for bonus episode number six. Thanks for joining us. We will be back in a week with episode number 46. And uh, until then, into the darkness we go.
<laughs> oh, I have to tell you something, but you can't record it. Go ahead. Okay, so. You're such a prick. And then I. You're the worst. <laughs> you're the worst. But the promise.